Yo guys, welcome back to another video today. We're going to dive into the Detroit Pistons. We're going to talk about the summer league that just got finished up uh, around a week ago or so by now. And uh, we're going to talk about the two guys that Troy Weaver went and got himself being Asar Thompson from Overtime Elite and Marcus Sasser from Houston University. So we're going to go and dive in and just look at all these highlights, talk about, you know, what they were able to accomplish in their summer league and, you know, basically their NBA debut, their first NBA action. And uh, we'll just talk just mainly about the rookies and, you know, where they can fit on this team, go over some stats and highlights. And yeah, so I'm um, super excited for this. Sorry, it's been a while since my last upload. You know, I've been busy doing stuff in the summer, working, hanging out with friends, but we're going to be back now and I'm going to be trying to upload at least once a week. But let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to start with Osar Thompson out of Overtime Elite, who I, I don't know. I don't think I've made a video about the Pistons. I think I was going to make a Pistons draft video and I ended up not doing it because I wasn't able to finish editing and then the summer league rolled upon us. So now we're basically just going to talk about him now instead. Asar Thompson had a great summer league. He got snubbed from the all rookie first and second team. Uh, or sorry, yeah, for the all summer league first and second team because this guy was balling out there and he he put up some great numbers. He also shot the ball very well. I think he shot. I remember uh, in that last game, he she was he was two two from three at one point. But going over his stats, he averaged about thirteen and a half points per game, ten rebounds per game, which is so impressive. He also averaged three and a half assists about two and a half steals and two blocks per game as well and you can just tell from this that he's going to be the type of guy that's just going to be stuffing the stat sheet every single night anytime he's on the floor and uh i'm gonna talk a lot about his defensive ability because i think out of everything his defensive ability is what impressed me the most for him to come to the league and already be able to rebound make plays shooting is there i've you've seen the glimpses of it he looked better at shooting than what he did at overtime elite his three-point shot looked like it was fallen. Uh, I think he had four three-pointers or three of them in the entire summer league, which, you know, isn't a lot. But he was two, two from three in that last game. And then he ended up, you know, chucking up some other ones towards the end of the shot clock and ended up, ended up two for five, which is all... If he could go two for five every game, that'd be absolutely perfect. That's 40% from three. That's, that's exactly what we need. But other than his shooting, his defensive ability is what really just stood out to me. For him to be able to come in, and I know it's just summer league. I know a lot of people are probably going to be like, it's too early to judge. It's too early. And that is true. That is very true. But I did not expect Asar Thompson to be able to come in and dominate the way he did in the summer league because even though it's just the summer league, this is better competition than overtime elite. He's playing against real NBA players. I know some of them might be on G League teams, but you can see out there right now, you can see Jabari Smith out there. You got guys, Cam Whitmore will probably be a backup guard for, uh, or backup wing, I should say, for the Rockets. Um, and all these other guys out there that Terry Eason, he's another guy who will be a, either a starter or a guy coming around right the bench. So these are all high level caliber players that, you know, Jabari, Jabari Smith is, you know, a top three pick going into year two. He had a great summer league. He had that 38 point game. I think it was this game too that he had 38. So for Asar Thompson to come out and just be able to dominate how he did in the summer league. And I know 13 and a half points, it, it's not, I wouldn't say that's dominating scoring wise, but 10 rebounds, three and a half assists, two and a half steals, two blocks. That is insane. For his shooting percentage to be how good they were, I was so impressed. Everything with him. Um, and obviously, the games like the Magic and the Rockets, he didn't get to score as much. And when you have guys like Jalen Duran, Jaden Ivey, James Wiseman out on the court. But what I really liked to see from the whole Summer League thing was first game, you got to see the three guys who already have that NBA action with Jaden Ivey, James Wiseman, and Duran. They got to get some reps. You got to see Jill and Duran hitting the three. You got to see the improvements that they've made. Ivy had a rough game shooting, had some turnovers. Then the next game, Jaden Ivy goes off for 22 points, 10 assists. Jalen Duran goes for 23 and 10. And it just, you know, everything started to kind of come together. And then all of a sudden, those three are out. Now it's up to Asar Thompson and Sasser. And, you know, we'll talk more about Sasser later, who struggled shooting most of the summer league um, until that last game. But Asar Thompson all of a sudden led the pack he was out there you know starting with this game right here against the toronto raptors going all the way up until the san antonio spurs he was the head of the team and he knew that the team had to rely on him and uh this highlight right here was one of my favorite highlights ever i mean that was one of the most athletic plays i think i've ever seen for him to come in and already be doing stuff like that is just awesome and sasser with the pass as well it's just a perfect play absolutely perfect play so that was awesome but also looking at asar thompson i mean 
it's just for him to come in and do what he did i was impressed by him i'm not gonna lie i was one of those people that when we drafted asar thompson i wasn't super happy i really wanted either cam whitmore taylor Hendricks was my number one guy and uh, i also really liked jairus walker as well asar thompson was like the fourth guy who i wanted i'm just glad we took him over a man i know a man wasn't even available but Thank you to the Houston Rockets for giving us this guy because he's going to be better than a men Thompson. He was better than a men Thompson at Overtime Elite. That's just a known thing. He is better than his brother. Two MVPs at Overtime Elite, two Finals MVPs. He has the better stats, better shooting. He is better than a men Thompson. So, and as you can see that highlight right there, another one of my favorites going up against a seven foot one or seven foot two guy and just straight up blocking him right at the rim. I mean, just rejecting a dunk. And this, Asar Thompson's only six foot seven, six foot eight on a good day. I mean, this. This kid is incredible. His defensive presence is going to be one of the best in the league. So if you want to know what I think his role is going to be for the Pistons and what I think his future looks like, I'll go ahead and tell you. I think what you're looking at right now is a future defensive player of the year at least two to three times. I think he's going to win defensive player of the year two to three times throughout his entire career. I think his defensive ability is just unlike any other I've seen coming into the league. I think he's going to win multiple defensive player of the years. Not only that. I think that you're looking at one of the best role players in the entire league. We're talking, you know, guys like Jalen Brown, who, you know, he might not be the number one player on the team, but without him, the Boston Celtics, you know, they wouldn't be where they're at without him. I know he didn't have the best, you know, finals performance or sorry, conference finals performance. I know he didn't look all that great, but Jalen Brown is still, a, you know, top, top player. There's another good highlight, by the way. That was one of my favorites. But Jalen Brown is still one of those top players that, you know, even though he's not the best on the team, you have to have him in order to win. And um, Asar Thompson's going to be a lot like that. You know, he might not even be the number two or three guy in the team because with guys like Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, Cade Cunningham, he might not even be the number three guy in the team. But at the same time, he's going to have such an important role defensively, such an important role, you know, fast breaks, even offensively when we need him to hit a three, need him to go in and dunk it, go, drive in, hit a layup, or do things like that where his playmaking ability comes into play getting rebounds he's an all-around player exactly what we needed he was the best draft pick that we could have gotten even if we had pick number two i think this is who i would want we got the right guy so i'm very happy with that i'm super happy we got osar thompson i think really the only thing that he would really need to work on would obviously be his shooting three-point shooting it's it's looking better and you know that's all you can really ask for it looks like he's been developing that three with a coach like monty williams you've seen what monty's been able to do with guys like Devin Booker, even Chris Paul late in his career, Cameron Payne, Mikhail Bridges, all these guys that, you know, are stars in the league and great role players. So super excited to see what Asar Thompson does. Now we'll move into Marcus Sasser, who is from Houston University. If you watched this dude play in college last year, you would know he's a top 10 player in college basketball and uh, was for sure the most important player on his team. He was a huge reason that Houston was a top five team throughout the whole year and they ended up falling short in the Sweet 16 shot close to 40 percent from three out in houston and while in the beginning you know early stages of summer league he also kind of struggled from three he looked really good and some things that really impressed me with marcus sasser was his playmaking ability which over at houston he only averaged about three assists per game which playing point guard over there you would expect you know maybe in the four to five range but he only averaged about three assists so i, I knew coming in that his playmaking wasn't going to be strong but I knew that overall, he was a great player who knew how to play the game. He knew how to shoot the ball. He was a good defender as well. He he was actually a really good defender at Houston. He's one of those guards that are annoying to have. To, like I, I watch him play. I'm like, dude, I would hate to play against this guy. He's one of those annoying pests on defense that just poke the ball out or you know get in your way and just he's he's good at defense. So that's another thing. Uh, it's he's great that he's good at defense because being only six foot two. He, um, you know, he doesn't have that size advantage that most guards like Kate Cunningham have. Doesn't have that length to him. But overall, just a really good player who I could see easily taking over Killian Hayes' spot or Alec Burks' spot. And I like both Killian and Alec Burks, especially Burks. You know, I, I feel like we're gonna end up getting rid of him, even though I really don't want to. But with the new guys coming in, like Monte Morris and Joe Harris, he really just doesn't fit on the team anymore. And uh, as well as Killian Hayes, who has not hit his stride, which. I still believe in killing a little bit, but maybe the best for him is just a new setting, new surroundings, a new team. So we'll see how that goes with them. But continuing to look at Sasser, he struggled from three uh, throughout the whole summer league up until that fifth game against Indiana Pacers where he ended up five and nine from three, which we'll talk about that uh, towards the end of his video clips. 
for now, I kind of want to just go through some stats for him in the Summer League. I take that back. We're actually just going to go through his stats for that final game against the Indiana Pacers, which he ended up with 40 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, 5 of 9 from 3, 16 of 25 from the field. An incredible performance. He had the most points in all of Summer League in that game, or the most points anyone scored in a single game, I should say. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, Keegan Murray dropped 41. That was not in the Las Vegas Summer League. That was in like a preseason kind of a Summer League out in uh, Salt Lake City. So it was not Keegan Murray. Anyway, Marcus Sasser, the way I see it, I see him being a great backup guard, a guy who's going to be like our sixth man coming off the bench. I can see him winning multiple sixth man of the year. And uh, I just, I really like his game. And watching him go off against the Pacers really helped my confidence grow in him because he's one of those guys where once he gets hot, he is not going to miss. He finished that game against the Pacers. And make sure you're listening to this. He finished that game against the Pacers 13 of 14 from the field. He ended up 16 of 25, meaning that he was 3 for 11 from the field and ended up 13 of 14, 5 of 5 from 3 to end the game. He was also 0 of 4 from 3 to start the game, ended up 5 of, 5 of 9, meaning he went 5 for 5 from 3, hit five threes in a row. I mean, that is incredible. 13 out of 14 shots to go in. I mean, that is... That shows you right there that if you let this guy get hot, he's going to go for 20, 30, 40 points any given night. And even if he's a backup, this is the exact kind of guy that you want on your team as a backup a guy who might not go off every night. But every, you know, five games or so, he's going to go off for 20, 30 points, have a great shooting night and play his game. And that's what he showcased uh, for the Detroit Pistons. So I was super happy to see him balling out and you know seeing him kind of catch a strike is even he said in this post game interview he kind of talked about how he hasn't been able to shoot much he hasn't been able to shoot very good throughout the whole summer league he's been trying to find a shot and then he just started to sh shoot to get hot and then he kept the shooting in order to stay hot and in my opinion that's a perfect mindset to have because once he got going that dude did not miss i mean he was just he missed one shot the rest of the game after he started three of eleven and like I said, 13 to 14. I mean, could you imagine if he wouldn't have started the game three for 11? He could have dropped 50. If he would have hit one three and maybe two more inside the three-point line shots, he could have ended up with like 50 points. I mean, that is just crazy to think about. And But for him to finish with 40 points, shooting like that, and, you know, kind of just taking over the team really made me happy. And like I was talking about earlier, it was fun watching the Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, James Wiseman dominate the first uh, three games. And then it was Osar Thompson, the next two. And the last game was the other rookie, Marcus Sasser. So seeing all those guys dominate just shows you how the Pistons are so underrated as a young core. I mean, they, in my opinion, have easily the best young core and the brightest future in the NBA the Houston Rockets, hell no. They, I don't even know what they're cooking up over there. They look horrible to me. I, I can't see that squad going anywhere ever. Maybe an eight seed in the playoffs. That's about it. Um, I look at the Orlando Magic. Okay, you can sell me on them. Uh, you could show me the Oklahoma City Thunder. I think they've probably got, as of right now, the most proven young core in the league, uh, besides Chet Holmgren, who I'm expecting to be at least decent in the league. But you look at the Detroit Pistons, man. I mean, Cade Cunningham, Jay Nivey. You got Asar Thompson now. You have Jalen Duran. You have James Wiseman, Isaiah Stewart, Marcus Sasser. You have all these young guys who are, you know, beginning to prove and emerge as stars in the league. And, you know, with no Cade last year, definitely took away. I think we probably would have been around 30 wins last year, which I know still isn't great. But at the same time, you know, what, what can you ask for? It's the Detroit Pistons. And, you know, we, we're still a few pieces out. And I still think that we might be a piece or two out from being able to compete. But now it's all about just getting older and getting better. And this young core, I'm in love with. And I love our two rookies. So yeah, I love both of our rookies. They're both amazing. They're insane. And I love them both. So if you want me to give you some stat predictions, I'm going to go ahead and say Sar Thompson's going to give us, if, if whether he starts or not, if he comes off the bench, I'd say he gives us 10, 5, and 4 with two steals and a block per night. If he doesn't come off the bench, if he starts, I think he's going to go for about anywhere from 12 to 15 points. I'd say probably about 12 points, uh, six rebounds, five assists, two steals and a block. I think it's going to be anywhere between there for, you know, whether he starts or whether he doesn't, it's going to be somewhere in between there. I think that he could average up to 15, but I think the lowest he'll average is 10, whether he comes off the bench or not. So we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes. But for, yeah, so for Asar Thompson, I definitely see him 
uh, having a huge role for us. And then you look at Marcus Sasser. I see him probably coming off the bench the whole season. I don't think he's going to the G League. I don't think he needs to. I think he's going to go ahead and put up, coming off the bench, he'll probably put up about, no, I'll go 10 points per night, uh, along with about three, three rebounds, two assists, a steal per game, and I'll go 37% from three. I think Asar Thompson's going to go about 34% from three, which is really good. If he can shoot anywhere but 33% from three, I'd be very happy. So, but yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want. I'm not going to force you to do anything, but it would go a long ways. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. See you soon.